I would like to mention uh, here in the point cloud this repack as a, a very very serious add-on to to any workflow, and um, this is very powerful since uh, till till here uh, was was um, uh, maybe tricky to to rearrange texture and why you need that so first first example i can i can put here just to make a little space okay it's when you use noise when you use noise mm -hmm. noise stop obviously so you you can have uh, you can have this in 2d as uh, x and y or uh, just one row and if we see how the points uh, look in 3D space, okay, we, we're done. So here I have 1000, let's make this 32, 32 to, to see the same amount. And uh, both of them 32 RGB and color. Okay, so can you please Tell me if uh, mm -hmm. you can see the dots, yep. maybe the, okay, yeah. So this is a wire, right? And uh, it, you, you don't have any information uh, on, on the, the, the uh, what pixel could, could stay next to mm -hmm. this one, okay? And that's, you, you might choose to, to go with this type of noise, which is uh, uh, nicer. Now it's a little messy, but if you increase the mm. period, it almost look mm. like a grid. And so you you have here, uh, um, I would say, um, m more data to play, uh, better data to, to play. But then you need, let's say, if you want to compute uh, distance to mm. distance, for this texture. So a texture where I have uh, uh, all of the distance, possible distances, I do need to to uh, put this into a linear one. So, and uh, yeah, the, the old way, it's uh, going into uh, um, <laughs> chunks and, uh, okay. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. And uh, there, is, uh, there is another way uh, I, uh, I did in a tutorial, um, after one year of using a GLSL done by a friend of mine, I, I uh, did uh, this with, uh, with two ramps. So, but now, this tool, it's, uh, it's amazing. Oh, wow, look at that. So now, now I have this into one line. So uh, from this moment to to make uh, distance, all the distances, you only need uh, a fit here. So that would be fill and, okay, we use flip, bottom left, subtract. Oh, wow, that's cool. So, uh, Substract. So here we have all the possible distances That's in this awesome. texture. And uh, I also did a, a tutorial in a Plexus tutorial. I showed the, a way how to optimize this by only taking the uh, this triangle half because uh, and and then even more to to repack it into a smaller texture, but. Uh, yeah, th this is very, very uh, nice. Yeah, there is not yet distance, it's uh, here. So, uh, mat, and I, I also show, showing you what I was saying to uh, bend the mat. So, it's good, it's good to go here with length, mm -hmm. like this, and you have the distances. Or sometimes you don't need to actually compute the distance. Instead, you need the distance square, uh, and uh, then you you use uh, those uh, steps here. So uh, uh, 
mm. like this or like this if you it's how, how you need it depends it, it, when, when you compute some some formulas you need the uh, d, d square so it depends on optimization but um, yeah this is this is the 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 different uh, uh, ways of of uh, picking the the noise and one other one other approach here for, for example uh, someone um, some some people ask how you make particles mm -hmm. with tops and in particles you have uh, um, i don't know if i have nine particles i have nine points and when i when i give the tenth one the tenth one just mm -hmm. appear there with noise top it's a little bit different because you would need to bake a texture first and start from uh, grabbing a little region from the middle or from the point zero where uh, where it's uh, it has the origin and uh, grab a texture from there if you want to be so smooth at uh, any given uh, uh, yeah. point you you will be smooth otherwise uh, the the value uh, are changing according with the with the resolution uh, i i can uh, I can show you. So, yeah, you you will have completely different different points if you change here uh, this. So, but uh, this is the the big the big player. Uh, point repack. It's one of my favorite. Uh, components That's a really cool one. In touch this. I haven't used that one yeah. yet, but I can see a lot of uses. You know, between the top math and even just yeah. You know, yeah. preparing data to move between different touch designer processes, right? Because sometimes maybe you have a really yeah. long texture, yeah. but maybe you want to do the opposite, which is you want to, you know, turn it into a 2D grid, yeah, exactly. send it over NDI or send it over um, spout. And then exactly. on the yeah. other side, yeah. basically yeah. turn it, yeah. you know, transform it back into, you know, the, the kind of method that you'd want it to have or the size that you want it to have. So that's actually really interesting. That's a cool one. Yeah, this this is very and uh, a different different uh, way. It's a uh, it's a little bit difficult to to make it with tops. You can make it, but uh, uh, you can use a you have to use this place in a such a precise manner that uh, you need to understand what what actually yeah. this place does. So uh, this is uh, so I have let's go. In, in mm -hmm. reverse so i have here uh now it's okay 32 by 32 this mm. yeah so it's it's that's really awesome. really beautiful that's uh, really powerful i think tool. yeah yeah and that it does it all yeah. automatically is amazing <laughs> that's the best part <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah and i also use use this when when for example uh okay here it's uh 30 it's yeah let's let's say what well, this is, would be would be the last one so i have here one uh 32 by 32 which is 10 24 points but i want 1000 point one one thousand uh, mm -hmm. precise and so i need to mask this mm -hmm. texture so this uh, this uh, uh, point repack it's coming very nice in handy here because if i have uh, 32 by 32 let's say i need a ramp uh, so this is uh, stuff that I, I used to play a lot in in my tutorials but uh, and it's something that i i always do do this so now i have a, oh a, a i know where this is the going numbers, this is really smart so numbers here are are from zero to one and i want a group to add the points from 1000 to uh, 1024 so here i go for for 1024 and you should have here um, zero mm -hmm. 
you 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 can see if if you are on repeat you can see because the, uh, the the it's very black right and when when you do the math what you need to do you you'll get some some crazy error so uh, take care of there so it's zero here okay and uh, now i want to repack this and i can use this texture as my indexes or I can use a mat here and ceiling oh, and I awesome. have my mask. So yeah, so, some of the algorithm in some situation, this index is yeah. very handy. Yeah, this is the point repack, uh, one of my favorite uh, That component. is super useful. Yeah. I haven't used it yet, but now I can see so many different <laughs> ways to use it just from those couple examples. That's really cool. This is my quick trick that I think a lot of people don't use and it's very flexible because it can be used to do exactly what we were just asked, which is how to set all your tops to nearest pixel. So let's say for example, I'm just going to make a bunch of tops here just as an example. Uh, let's put this into a level. This is just random. Don't don't worry too much people about what this is. It's nothing. Uh, let's composite these. Cool. So we have all these tops and we wished that it was easy to just go in and turn input smoothest to nearest pixels, viewer smoothest to nearest pixels, or, you know, this could apply to any parameter. You know, maybe you want to set all of them to 32 bit, either RGBA or RGB. So there's a really cool dat that came out, opfind. Aurelian, have you used opfind before? No, this is a crazy no. dat. So this dat will go through your network based on your criteria and return to you all of the operators in the network that match those criteria. Okay. okay. And it's got callbacks, which is what we're going to use a little bit in a second. So the cool thing we can do is let's start to kind of make it more precise. So let's say we want to turn all of the tops to let's just, we'll start with 32 bit because that's an easy one because they all have it. So we want yeah. to turn all their pixel format and we want to make it 32 bit RGBA. So we have to go through all tops, find okay. them and set the format parameter to number four. So I'll go to my op find. I can say here, you know, change the depth. I don't need to right now. It's fine. If you had more project, you know, containers, you could set more depth so that it goes into all the containers. Families, I can start turning everything off that isn't a top. And then, you know, we can have more filters here if we want to get certain types of operators and not other ones, or maybe we want them to, you know, only be inside of Let's say I copy all of these, put them inside the container and change my depth here. So you see now I see both. I see basically the copy, the original and the ones inside the container. Maybe you only want to affect the ones inside of the container and not the ones outside. You can go to the filter. You can say uh, star container one star and all of a sudden it's getting just that subsection of items from inside the container. I'll get rid of that for now just because it'll be easier this way. And then you can do good stuff like in the columns, turn on the path. You know, the name I don't really care about, type I don't really care about. This is what I want. I want to know all the paths to all of the tops that I want to change the pixel format of. And then there's some really cool stuff you can do. So for example, we could put this right into the callbacks. So something like, you know, and the first thing I like to do is, is for folks that are maybe a little bit scared of Python, you know, don't be scared of Python, but if you are, start with printing stuff. So for example, what I can do is I can print a uh, row and I'll print dat, I'll print current op, and I'll print results just so we can see what it looks like. So what I'll do is I'll make, uh, what can I do? Can I refresh this? There, so I hit the refresh pulse button and it gives me all this data back 
about every single operator, tells me what number they are, tells me what they're. Uh, this actually is the reference to the op find that we don't need. It gives me the path here, which I, I think we're probably going to use. And then all of the information about that operator, which is really cool. So what we could do is let's say we set this example of, I want to go through every top and set it to 32 bit RGB. So I know that current op, and we can also read, oops, uh, we can read the little documentation at the top here. Cur op is the op being queried. And that was the path that we saw. So what I can do is say even something as simple as current op dot par dot format equals four. And now every time that a new operator dat gets found, it's going to go into their format settings and set their format to 32 bit pixel. So if I make a new one here, so I can oh, make okay. uh, another constant, brand new. Boom, drop it in. Automatically, the op find is going to run and turn the pixel format to 32-bit. Could do that for all the operators. So if we wanted to do, for example, uh, let's say, um, I guess we can do, let's do input smoothness. Because this is an interesting one because some operators have this and some don't. So this is where something like a uh, try and accept loop can come into play. Because what will happen is if we say current op dot par, and this is input filter type, input filter type equals, and we want it to be zero. So now I can go ahead and refresh this. And you can see in, actually, no, this is for the old one. Let me refresh. So now it should have gone through and set all of them. Anyone that has this option has now been changed to nearest pixel. And actually, the nice thing is I thought we were going to have to do a try and accept, but it seems like it does a good bit of error handling itself. So every, you know, if I take a composite and I make another one, automatically my script is going to set it to 32-bit float and nearest pixel input smoothness. So for folks, yeah, super, super nice, right? Nice. And this is this is yeah, this yeah. tool, this dat op find dat is so powerful because you can do this for things like this, custom parameters. Maybe you have a certain set of defaults or presets that you like to use when you drop in certain operators. You can kind of just make one op find dat, have the on op found area kind of scripted out a little bit, so that every time you make that operator, you know it's getting sent the way you want it. Uh, especially if you're doing stuff like this, where maybe you're, you're working with a lot of data and you want to set all the tops in the network. And maybe even like I was saying, you use the filters to say, okay, well only grab the ones inside of this container. Don't grab all the other ones in the project, but just in this container, set them all to 32 bit RGBA and input smoothness is nearest. And you could do the same with viewer smoothness, like all of the parameters. So I think that's like a really cool thing. I don't see people use a lot of because there's so much, you could put this at the top of the project and literally go through a whole project of thousands of operators and in the snap of a finger, make that change yeah. to all of them without having to like go through every single one, click through the page, change the setting and like hope it worked. You know, it's, it's reliable, it'll always work. That's it's super, super nice, nice, right? And very That's little Python. Nice. Yeah. You know, th this is my big thing when I tell people is, um, it only takes a little bit of Python, just a tiny, tiny bit of Python to become very powerful in touch designer. You know, we don't need to go down and you don't need to learn object oriented programming that much. You know, a little bit helps, but you don't need to learn, you know, extensions if you don't want to. You don't need to learn how classes work if you don't want to. You just need to remember a few little ways to use the Python. You memorize them in, you know, 10 minutes a day for a couple of days and you're going to memorize how to use the scripts. And you're, you have so much power, right? Using stuff like op find, chop executes, dat executes, all of these things. I mean, when I make them, they only have like one or two lines of code in them. It's, I'm never writing like hundred lines of code yeah. in my project. It's a couple lines here, a couple lines here. And then you kind of build with that until you get something that's really uh, powerful. Hey folks, thanks for watching. If you're serious about learning touch designer and getting into our interactive and immersive industry, I highly recommend you check out the interactive and immersive HQ Pro. It's the only educational resource and community of its kind for touch designer and interactive professionals. You can click the link in the description to learn more about that. 
And if you liked this video, hit that like button. And if you're new here, don't forget to hit subscribe and click on the little bell icon for more awesome free content.